Welcome to the Twinkle Talks EYFS podcast. Working in the early years is busy, funny, messy and exhausting. Join me, Shana, and the rest of the Twinkle EYFS team as we talk honestly about our experiences as practitioners, teachers and professional nappy changers. Whether you're listening to increase your CPD hours or catching up on our antics whilst driving home from work, Twinkle EYFS will share everything you need to know about all things early years. Hello lovely listeners, it's Shana here from Twinkle Talks EYFS here with another episode in our mini-series of early years around the world. Now I'm really excited today because this episode is going to be slightly different as we did a live interview on TikTok. It was really exciting, over 300 views, over a thousand likes, so we seem to be doing something right. You really enjoyed it. Good, because I did too. So this is the recording of that live episode because we didn't want anyone who couldn't make it to miss out. I am talking with the wonderful Delia from Twinkle Mexico about what it's like to teach early years in Mexico. If you would like to watch along as well as listen along, I'm going to upload this episode of the TikTok video on YouTube as well. So if you haven't switched over already, head on over to YouTube and you can see our faces as we talk. But for now, let's get into the episode. Bien, gracias. ¿Y tú? Oh, <laughs> so, soy muy cansada. Aurora, Aurora Del- Delia. It's Thursday. It's near the weekend. I'm like, I'm crawling. I'm crawling to Friday is what I'm having. So uh, that's my limited I, Spanish for you. I have heard that it's 8 p.m. in UK. It's 8 p.m. here. Yeah. It's Delia, PM. it's past it's past my bedtime. It's past my bedtime. You see what I do for you? I come on at night time for you. It's two PM. It's two PM right here. <gasps> What's the weather like? Tell me. It's beautiful. Outside it's really sunny, but here inside my house it's a little bit cold. When you say okay, when you say cold, give me some temperatures here <laughs> because I'm pretty sure okay, it's, it's not gonna be cold. as cold. Yeah, I mean, uh, cold, it's about uh, 19 degrees. <laughs> that is a British summer. That is, I mean, I'm literally in between Manchester and Liverpool, which is the north of uh, of England. That is scorching, scorching. Oh, my goodness. Well, it is delightful to have you. If it's 2 p.m., does that mean your teachers have just finished school? Most of them, I think, are teaching and some of them are finishing the day. Oh, hopefully by the end they can come and join us, which is yeah, very exciting. I someone can join. I I I share the event, but I, I don't <gasps> Thank know. Thank you. A difficult time, a difficult hour for the teachers, but I'm really yes. happy to be here anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad to have you. And just in case anyone is wondering, especially for you and your teachers, Delia, I will download this uh, live and it will go on the podcast as well. So even if your wonderful teacher friends can't can't make it. Don't worry, we're going to put it on the podcast and you can listen to it later as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. For the me. wonderful, no, you're welcome. For the wonderful people that are here, please feel free to use the comments. Me and Delia will keep an eye out. We'll, I've already said hey to some people, Molly and Megan, we've got some preschool teachers, we've got some apprentices, which is awesome. Let me know where you are, let me know what you're doing. And also, as we're talking, please feel free to put questions in. That's why we're here. I'm probably not going to be able to answer them, guys. Delia is the one with the knowledge here. I am doing this so that you get to talk to Delia because she is the fountain of knowledge this evening. Um, And I'm just, (laughs) I'm here for the bants, really. I think that's probably what my role is today. (laughs) So, go on. One with the knowledge, I would would really like to to be that one. (laughs) A girl with that one. (laughs) No, no, it's great, it's great. I think that something that was really interesting for me is that when we um, got in contact the first time, uh, it was really interesting that uh, you wanted to know about how education is in other countries and how people from other countries, uh, sorry, and how people from other countries know um, the educational curriculum and the things 
in other countries happen uh, since the pandemic uh, began. We uh, we just thought that it was a little bit um, different in other countries, the educational system, the curriculums. But as we were uh, meeting some teachers, we discovered that everything happens almost in the same way in the countries, especially facing the problems with parents, mm -hmm. with the students. No? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that I'm being politically correct here, but yes. It, like maybe curriculum sometimes as well is a bit of a tricky issue. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that it's not, it's not too uh, different in, in, in Mexico than in the other countries. And the, the worst thing is that we are facing exactly the same problems. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the ones that I mentioned, the other one, I think it's the, the salary. <laughs> this is another oh, big problem that I was going to say, you, you, you're going to set me off here. Exactly. So we say, I know maybe in Europe, they are much better because they have better conditions and better things, but actually they are almost the same, right? Well, this is it. This is why I started this podcast and I'm really glad that you um, agree with me, like this mini series, because especially like you say, because of the pandemic, we were all shut off, weren't we, for such a long time and there were so many missed opportunities. There would have been students or apprentices that maybe would have wanted to travel or uh, teach abroad in different countries and they weren't able to and they feel like they've missed out because now they've settled in a job here and now that security is keeping them here and I'm thinking well hang on a minute let the world is opening up again let's connect with everybody again let's see what it's like and you're so right that yes a lot of things are very different in different countries and it's lovely to see how different people and how different um, countries do things but we have a lot of the similar issues I feel like the early years is a global conversation. You know, every country, no matter where you are, understands that early years is the most important time in anyone's life. And I think, I'm not sure if it's reached you in uh, Mexico, Delia, but um, I call her Queen Kate. She's not Queen yet. Princess Kate and uh, Prin uh, Prince William, they've launched uh, the hashtag Shaping Us campaign over here, um, which is basically a campaign to put early years on the global map to say, you know what, this is important. And this is why, this is why, um, uh, print, you know, Queen, Queen Kate uh, and the Royals believe in it. And we're like, yes, thank you. I mean, we've been saying it for years. Many other people, we know, we're in early years, no matter where we are in the world, we know this, don't we? But it's nice to be globally recognized. And I just thought, you know what, let's have this conversation across the world. 8 p.m. here, 2 p.m. where you are doesn't matter. You know, we we share the same values, we share the same things, uh, and you and me we work together, which is which is cute, which I love. Uh, so before yeah. we get into the nitty gritty, Delia, tell everybody I know you, but tell everybody, tell all of our listeners and our followers who are listening right now, tell us about you, tell us about how you became an early years teacher and how you came to work for Twinkle as well. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Shana. Uh, I think that it was really, really uh, funny <laughs> the way that I started. As I told you, I have been a teacher for about 22, 23 years. I know I look really young. <laughs> you do! <laughs> but... <laughs> Stop! You do! <laughs> yes, but no, I, I, I began so many years ago. And the, the first contact that I have with, with students were, uh, was with early years. I was a preschool teacher for about oh. 11 years. And this is the, the, um, the period of my life that I really enjoyed a lot, uh, being with the students. Of course, I think that's something that was really, really helpful. It's that I was really young and I could sing and dance and yes. move in the same way that they were doing it because I, I cannot imagine now doing exactly the same with oh, those me neither. students. Yes. My back um, is gone. I'm like, I'm nearly 30. That's young in comparison, but I can't get on those tiny chairs anymore, Delia. No, 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 no. Exactly. So they, they really need someone that is uh, in the same uh, mood uh, or, or that can uh, follow them, what they are dancing and 
and running and doing things. And <laughs> you have to be really, really, really careful with what they are doing. So I really enjoyed that that age, uh, that period in my life. It was really, really nice. I I began um, or I started my English. Well, I I, be, I started giving just uh, English lessons for students because I knew some words and some uh, sentences in English. So it was my first job. I, I started doing lots of terrible things with them. For example, I, I remember <laughs> when I started that I was in a in the classroom and the principal told me, well, this is your group, so now you have to start. And after a month that, ha- that was um, passed, that passed, um, I I didn't work with books, so the principal told me, "What were you doing during this month?" And I said, "Well, just playing and dancing with the students." And she said, "Well, but you have to work with the books and all the materials Ugh. they have." I was just like, "Oh my god, what do I have to do now?" <laughs> <laughs> it was the beginning of 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 uh, my experiences with students, and thanks God, it was in. At the beginning of the of the year 2000, so now I'm really happy that the Mexican curriculum that the authorities are uh, taking in count more the little one, the toddlers, because uh, some years ago it was uh, only uh, educational things for they were sorry sorry only educational things for primary students or the ones that were in primary about six years, 12 years. And the little ones, the toddlers were not taken in count. We, we just thought that they were uh, in the schools on the, only to pass the day uh, mm-hmm. and they were not learning, especially in uh, official schools, in public mm-hmm. schools. They were not in private. They, it's a little bit different. But now um, the the curriculum is changing. Well, actually, Mexico it's a little bit uh, tricky because every time that we change the president, or almost every time, the curriculum changes. So we have been oh of, yes, it's at, and the president uh, stays in the same position for about six years. So so uh, every six years you have to. You have like See. you have to change the curriculum entirely. Exactly. Yes. Oh wow! I thought okay. Wait, how do you keep up? <laughs> it it has happened since some years ago, since two or three presidents ago. Not it it, it was not the same in, in the past, but we have we have had a big changes in the last ten years with the curriculum. And uh, now we have we are going to have another one in August, so that it's a really big uh, change for the Mexican curriculum, and something that was included is the education for the early years and the preschoolers. Um, they have now a different curriculum, and they are included in the basic education uh, as a formal education. I mean, ah, they are they are on. <clears throat> things but now they are included as the first stage in now it is going to be divided into six six stages and the first one is going to be the early years and then preschoolers and then the first and second grade third and fourth grade and it is going to be divided like this but this is the first time that they are taking in count for the mexican curriculum so wow yeah that's a good step so in terms of like what counts as early years in Mexico? We have, I think, preschool, which goes from like birth to two, kind of. And then you'll have nurseries, which might go from age two to three to four. Some even go into uh, age five, um, where they have a reception year. And then the top of our early years is reception, when they turn five years old. And then they go into formal primary school when they're six in year one. How how does it work in Mexico? Is it the same ages or different? It's almost the same. Actually, they can be in a school since since they are uh, 45 days. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really, really uh, small. 
but the formal education begins when they are two years. I mean, right. uh, schoolers uh, when they are uh, three years, three to five, and about six years they start with primary school. Mm -hmm. so it is since six to 12 years, 11, 12 years, and they, they continue with secondary. Yeah, yes. okay, so it's pretty similar. That's good, that's good. Similar. Did you say mm -hmm. for babies, 45 days old? Yes. Uh, what? what that's, that, I, that's really young. Why? Why is it so young? I don't know why. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is, I don't know why exactly. Well, this is um, only uh, for special schools and mm -hmm. for some others that uh, when parents don't, don't, don't have a place uh, where they can leave their babies, Mm -hmm. But I, when I started, I work with the students uh, from about one year. They were mm -hmm. the nursery ones. They are called nursery, nursery, or something like this. <clears throat> and I work with them with colors and basic vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But uh, you start working with, uh, well, as an English teacher, I used to do that. But the Spanish ones, the ones that are in charge of the group, they used to work with motor gross, yes, by, uh, motor gross skills. Mm -hmm. Gross motor yeah. skills, like um, physical, like, like, yeah, yeah. Physical, yeah. Yes. Um, and this is something that is, is working in those years. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they work with the same, with basic vocabulary, with special events, Something mm. that they can teach about the, the environment, the things that are surrounding them. So this is how they usually work with them. And then they go through a preschool, but it's a three to five years. And in, in I don't know if in, in all the countries is the same, but in Mexico, we have like two different kind of education because we have the one that it's for the public schools and the one that it's for the private schools oh uh, yeah if, yes if you send your kid to one uh, public school they learn the basis the, ba the basic things uh, about and they continue with the this kind of skills and <clears throat> but if you send them to a private school they learn about letters numbers math and those mm. things it's different that is interesting so we have in england we just have national a curriculum that you know kind of everyone follows but if you uh, go to it's not necessarily a private school but there are some schools oh what are they called i cannot remember independent schools or academies they can make their own curriculum so it's interesting that yeah you have something similar hello twinkle argentina lovely to see you so yeah. i suppose no then <laughs> what okay so how would you become an early years either teacher or nursery nurse or practitioner in mexico because we have loads of different ways in in england is it the same for you well actually they have to they have to study uh -huh. there is three here they are called educadoras they are from the for the ones that study to become a, a teacher for early years uh, I don't know, it's a little bit difficult for them because they studied a lot. <laughs> and sometimes, mm -hmm. well, as you said, we have a, a national curriculum that they have to follow. But uh, according with the school that you are in, if it's public or private, mm -hmm. so this is the, the thing that you have to follow. Everybody is going to, has to cover the national curriculum, but... Uh, of course, that uh, for the private schools, they have more hours. The students are more hours in the schools. In mm -hmm. a public school, they are about four, four hours, three, four hours. And in a private one, they are about six hours. Yes. Oof. So they have, they, they have the opportunity to cover more things, to, to make more things with the students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, gosh. Okay, so 
uh can you go from so over here we have things like uh you can go to college or university you can do child care which is a different course to maybe going to university and doing something called a pgce which is like a postgraduate degree and then you can go and do a master's in education like there's so many different i i can't honestly i, I can't keep track um is it the same for you guys Uh, some years ago, there was a degree. Well, it was it was something technical that was a, a called a, I don't remember that word. It was a, it was not as a teacher, but you can, you could study when you were a, at the same time in the college. So you were Yes. you could start, study the same. But a, some years a, ago. It was modified, and now the teachers that are since the beginning of the educational stages uh, have to study in the university. Mm. And something that it's called the normales. This is a kind of a school that they go to study this kind of degree. Uh, ah, yeah, I remember. They were puericultistas. Uh, and and oh. they, they were called asistentes educativas. But it was something not formal. It was only when you were yeah. studying in college. But then you, uh, it was modified and they have to study uh, a normal degree in the university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, see, look, I saw in the comments, Adriel helped us out there with us as Sistante Ecuadoria. Thank you. Gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> uh, we've got Erin who said <laughs> she did yes. an MVQ in childcare. That's the one I missed off. You can also do an MVQ. Uh, you could do apprenticeships and things like that, yeah, which is amazing. Um, we've just got a question, uh, so I want to I wanna do it before we move on, uh, Delia, because I'm going to forget, I'm terrible. So we've got Lynn, who's asked, does Twinkle have stuff to go with along, along with Read, Write, Ink? So in case you didn't know, Read, Write, Ink is a phonics scheme that we have in England, and I'm proud to tell you, Lynn, that Twinkle has their own phonics scheme, and I actually go into schools and I go and teach Twinkle phonics in schools, Um, but if you're looking for general phonics resources, we have those as well. You, by all means, go and have a look at on our website. But uh, that actually kind of leads on to a really good question. Delia, do you um, do phonics and things like that in Twinkle, uh, in Twinkle, in Mexico? Yes, but <clears throat> it depends on the method that you are using because not all of the methods to teach students how to read and write are mm -hmm. uh, with phonics. <clears throat> Uh, actually, we have something that it's called, well, we have so many kinds of methods. Uh, and we used to work um, with syllabus. Uh, that is, yeah, the yes. syllabus, yeah. Yeah, that it's not syllables because in syllabus is like the content. That the content. Oh, in, okay. It's, not, it's when you put, well, it's like, I don't remember the, the name, but <laughs> it's when you put two letters together, the, the consonant and the vowel. Uh, oh, okay. Are, but, um, We Do you mean to... CVC word, consonant, uh, vowel? Uh, vowels, yes. GPC. Yep. But Syllables, it... got you. Do you know we're getting there? <laughs> yeah, but it is, it is not exactly the same because in English, uh, you teach, well, most of the, uh, most of the times you teach uh, children how to read and write with phonics. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so you in, teach in, it rather in, in syllable ways, so in different, yeah. in a groups. Oh, in a group. yes. I like yeah. that, Do you know, it probably makes, does it make more sense? Because am I right in, in thinking that in uh, Mexico, Spanish is an official language. So in, in using the Spanish, it's easier to, to teach and to break down the language in, in the syllables rather than the, the sound. It, it could be, but... Uh, as I told you, for example, there is another method where you teach the students or what they learn their their names. The first thing that they learn is their names. And mm. when they discover the sounds, the phonemes for each letter of their names, they um, relate those sounds with some other words. And that's mm. the way they, are, they learn how to read by using their names or some words. So I really they, like that. We have, yes, we have different methods, but uh, the phonemes are different in English than in Spanish. 
Oh yeah, mm. can I just say English is not a phonetic language. Like I did, <laughs> I did English language and linguistics at university before I became an early years teacher. So I'm like a complete language nerd. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> Sorry guys, but to, the, phonics. I love phonics is my favorite thing to teach. I love it. But you also have to be aware that English does not make sense phonetically. <laughs> so to have other things like you say using syllables, I think is really important because. You know, like you say, phonics isn't everything. We need to have it, you know, with, with lots of other things. And Erin has just made a point and she says her daughter has actually learned better with syllables than with phonics. And I completely understand why. There are so many different ways. And it's nice that in Mexico, you you have that flexibility to be able to uh, choose what kind of uh, phonics suits your children, I guess. Well, actually, it, it is included in the curriculum, but... Yeah. Some really curious in Mexico is that if uh, the method it's really um, famous in this moment everybody oh. or all the schools are using exactly the same method for example uh, some years ago there was a boom with Montessori schools yes they, hey this school is uh, has the Montessori system and we use Montessori system and things like those and mm. nobody really knew what was Montessori but they knew that they wanted that their children went to that school so um, this is something that happens here uh, some years ago it was the phon uh, phonics system and then the mm -hmm. global system and everybody was like I want that my children learn it that way because it's easier and and it's so friendly for them and then the, the things change every every well when a new method um, uh, appears. Do you have to like, when you know you said the, the curriculum changes every six years, which is crazy. I don't know how you keep up. What happens to the children? So say if you've got children in nursery, they're three years old, they start in, there's this new president, they've got this curriculum, then six years later, they're in year four, they're nine years old, Oh wait, no, no, no! New curriculum. Like, what, what, what happens? Um, this is something that the teachers are really interested in because <laughs> uh, it, it is just that when you want to evaluate a system, a complete system, right. it has to you you have to do it since the students begin in in the early years, and uh -huh. they end the system in, when they end secondary, at least. A primary. Oh. It has not happened for years because they started with one system and then in six years they started with another one and even it's a really big problem for teachers because sometimes they have to face two programs at the same time. Yeah. They have yes, they have to be working with two programs at, at the same time and it's a big How do you keep two curriculums in your head at one time i can barely keep one curriculum in my head how do you, <laughs> you your teachers must be amazing <laughs> yes it, it's really difficult for them because you know when you're a teacher you have many things to do not only working in the in the classroom mm -hmm. with the students and taking care of them and teaching and preparing material you have mm -hmm. so many things administrative uh, things that you mm -hmm. have to prepare like report uh, evaluation uh, so many things. Um, something that the uh, that it was used to do here it was that the teachers used to have the same grade for years, two or three years. They used to give the same grade, so they were in contact with all the content for those grades. For example, if I was a third grade teacher, I, mm -hmm. I could continue with that grade for two or three years more. Because in that way, I could learn more about that grade in specific, mm. the, um, the content, the ev everything. But now, when you have two different curriculums, it's difficult because because you sometimes have some activities from the first one and some activities for the second one. And then you have to continue doing the things to um, evaluate the students in the new way that it's going to to be applied for the for the new curriculum. So teachers in Mexico, I think that are tired, that are a little bit angry because they mm. cannot understand why they it 
suffers, the, the system suffers a lot of changes. And, and because in Mexico, the education, it's, um, I, 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 and this is my personal opinion. It's my mm -hmm. personal opinion. But I think that it is not taking in count. I, I mean, it's not important for the for the for the country. It mm. could it could be like this. And uh, when you change the things, like if they were only papers, and you are not working with papers, you are working with people. Mm -hmm. So that's why it could it could be like they were not. Um, That, that was not important for the students. Uh, you are not taking in account the emotional things, mm -hmm. the um, the context, because of course it was really difficult in Mexico to to apply technology in the pandemic because uh, we don't have good internet connections in the schools. There are not internet con free internet connection well sometimes there are there is not water in the schools <laughs> so wow. they, they don't yes some some schools don't have blackboards uh, uh, chairs so uh, it, it was not easy for teachers to have no. uh, to use with technology because they were not accustomed so no. it's it, i think that For Mexico, it could be like education is not an important thing. Gosh, this is really sad. Do you think? Do you think it's changing? Is there a new curriculum coming? Do you think it is going to be uh, on the priority list more? Do you think? Do you see a change? No, I think. But um, I think that talking about the government, it is only uh. changing in paper. <laughs> the uh. They say that you have to implement some new things uh, and more if it's talking about technology, but they, they don't help teachers. If the system has been working and going well, it's because of the effort of the teachers. The teachers have been putting money and buying things and they, they use their own things. I mean, mm -hmm. their computers, their cell phones, their internet so that's why it is working but it is not because of the government no do you know i know it clearly sounds a lot more uh concentrated in mexico than it is here but what you what you're saying to me is not new which is really quite sad because i spent my own money uh getting resources for my children uh buying food because they you know some of the children they weren't uh, they weren't able to have breakfast at home but we you know the school couldn't afford snacks so I would go out and get some and so just to make sure the children would eat and I know it's a very different uh scale but it it's it's sad uh that it's not a shock because it seems maybe before You know, like you're saying about your your principal saying, oh, what are you doing? Where, why are you not teaching from books? Why are they not doing books? It's that lack of understanding of what early years is, I think. And they're saying, oh, we're just playing. No, playing is a form of learning. Playing is the form of learning in early years. And like you say, we as early as practitioners, no matter where we are in the world, eight, six hours apart, we get it. We know. So it's it really is our teachers isn't it it really is our teachers our educators our nursery nurses that really keep the systems going which is sad um, but a big problem in in mexico i think that the education it's a big business mm. for schools for private schools that it's mm. a, a big business so they are not paying attention in how the students have developed uh, their skills uh, according To the age, um, yes, they are not taking in count that. So, for I, I couldn't imagine some years ago. I couldn't imagine a student, uh, a three-year student, uh, reading. And I said, why? Why do they have to read at that stage? Because it is not necessary. 
But mm. in Mexico, it is considered that if a student, if a, a, a really young uh, kid is reading and making additions and uh, subtractions and things like those, mm -hmm. the school is really well and you are giving him or her a very good education. And it's not like that. You know, it's you have not. so many things to, to develop. Sorry, guys, I have no idea why it kicked me out. It kicked me out of my own life. What is what is that? What is that? Kick me out. I'm here, Delia. I'm here. We're getting into a really serious conversation. God, maybe TikTok, but like, mm, this is too much. Can see me? Yeah, not the end, though. I'm sorry. It was me. TikTok kicked me out. I don't know why. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was just thinking, like, it was the government because I am not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you the government are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's it. We know what we will make a stand. We will continue. We will continue because this is important issues. Important. You continue, Delia. <laughs> yes, I was just really, really scared about that. I said, "Well, uh, Lopez Obrador, that is our president, is going to kick me out." <laughs> You know, that would make us well famous. That would make us go viral, though, and then people would hear about the message. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, but not all the things are terrible in Mexico. As I told you, we have really great teachers. Really, yeah. really great teachers. I really love the way... When I started being a teacher, uh, I received a lot of help from teachers that were uh, really creative. And they, as you said, they were just saying like, hey, you have to enjoy this one. And something that I always remember is um, when I had, at the end of the school years, in some, in some schools, you have something called that it's the open class. It's a class when, where parents can um, come in your classroom and see what you are doing with the students. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same in some other places. But um, we used to have something like that. And when I had my first open class, we used to have something like that. And when I had my first open class, I was just really, really scared because, you know, the, the situation is different with the students and the parents and principal oh, yeah. and everybody evaluating, yes. <laughs> um, and at the end of the class, I, I, I started crying. Oh. I was really, really nervous and anxious and all the feelings that you can imagine. So I started crying and parents were like, are you okay? <laughs> it's everything okay at home? <laughs> and I said, yes. <laughs> it, it's because I was really, really nervous. And the Spanish teacher that was my partner uh, in that moment told me that I know what is happening. You are like, you cannot believe that this happened, right? I said, yes, I cannot believe that these little kids learn so many things from me. And that I really, really was pushing them to learn things. And at the end, I couldn't enjoy them in the best way that I had to do it. Uh, the little moments, the little things that they say. And it was the, the big pressure that I, that I was uh, feeling. So since that day, I tried to enjoy what everything that I was doing with them. The jokes, oh. the things, the... All, all, everything that happened in the classroom and I love that do you know what that's what we do isn't it I think earlier is really unique in that every day is just crazy for a start absolutely crazy but they're just so funny like they're like little old men and women in tiny children bodies and they, there's no filter they just say what they say they 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 want to fart they fart they need a poo they tell you they pick their nose they do it. and it's just it's such unfiltered innocent hilariousness that you just you just have to embrace it and it's just like yeah why not let's be kids kids be kids let's let's join in and I love that so I'm glad do you feel like uh actually you know what tell me about your curriculum <laughs> what, what it is at the minute because it might change does it focus like you said does it focus on literacy uh, maths or does it have, is it more free in early years about gross motor about language and things like that in early years, it is a, a little bit more focused on those skills. Mm -hmm. And now we are going to have four, something that are called campus formativos, that are the main areas that is going to be divided. 
So the students mm -hmm. are going to be trained in those things like uh, scientific and math things, the mm -hmm. literacy one, and some other big changes that the curriculum the curriculum is going to to face is that now we are going to have uh well the um, idea is that the students can get more in contact with inclusive things because this is something that doesn't uh, happen that doesn't uh, happen in mexico mm -hmm. um it's uh i don't know if it's because of the religion or the politics but things are not like in other countries <clears throat> where you can have some other kind of students and they are in contact with them. <clears throat> mm. This program is a little bit more focused on those areas in the um, culture, in the Mexican culture, uh, in the Mexican identity. identity. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that this is something that it's good because... As you are growing, um, especially with the kids that we have now that are in contact with a lot of cultures and mm -hmm. so many things that they can just click and be chatting with a person from in the other part of the world. <clears throat> they don't know anything about their culture, their, their country. And I think that it is important. So this is something that is going to be <clears throat> tough since they, they are in early years. Uh, science and math, uh, even in a different way, uh, and literacy. This is uh, these are the main areas of the curriculum. Yeah. Okay. And do you get to explore the curriculum like through games or activities, or do the children have like a very strict timetable? They have to sit at tables, or what? What does a day look like? The idea is that you can vary your your activities. Of course, that you are going to have a methodology to fo uh, to follow mm -hmm. in every area in these campus formativos that we are going to have. But uh, something that I really like about the the early years uh, teachers is that they are always really creative. They mm -hmm. like playing and they like doing activities outside. Um, the um, public schools in Mexico are, well, not all, but most of them for the early years are really, really nice. They have a sand area. They have some um, some playing uh, zones where the students have some games. This is something really, really nice. It is uh, different in some of the uh, private schools because they don't have good spaces for students. And here the public schools are really, really big. They have mm. good and big uh, backyards, so they can run and play. They have music in the curriculum. Um, it doesn't happen in the private ones. They they prefer to teach them how to use a computer. They have technological classes. And oh. yeah. <laughs> so there are differences between those systems uh, and the students are in the same uh, ages. I remember that when I started uh, teaching, I had, uh, uh, well, my my niece was six years and I was just teaching other six years in a private school. And I was just checking what she was learning in a public school and what, what, what was I teaching. <clears throat> and they were really, really different contents and really different uh, skills. Um, oh. At the end, it was a little bit difficult for my niece to learn how to write and read. She learned how to write and read when and read. Sorry, when he was uh, like about six years, and in a private school, they learn when they are in kinder two that it's four years, five years. Oh wow! So really mm -hmm. early. Wow. Okay. Exactly. Well, we've got a comment here actually from the English club. Um, you might know this. I don't know. So if I, I'm sorry, English club, if I don't know what this means. What's your experience with the TPR teaching method? Do you know what this is, Delia? The TPR, Total Physical. Yes. Oh, please Physical. tell us. What is this? 
the total physical response it's um something that you can use with your with your students when you where you implement things that they have to move or they have to do relate some things with special what movements okay when you are dancing when you say for example uh, when you use and you have to use a lot of body language Um, um, Can you do something for us now? Can you try 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 TPR on me? What are we What are we doing? <laughs> do some Spanish. <laughs> well, I think I, I, I this is something that I don't remember a lot. I <laughs> I know that it's total physical response, and it has to be related with movements that you have to move your body. And for example, if you are using um, verbs, you can act the verbs. So this is the way that, of course, that you are going to learn them because you are acting the verbs and you make the movements. Like jumping, you'd, you'd actually like jump or throwing. Exactly. You throw. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. this okay. Is what? TPR. You taught me something because I didn't know what TPR is, so, so thank you. Um, before we get onto the fun bit, I want to ask what your favorite, favorite, favorite thing is about being an early years teacher in Mexico. My favorite thing, mm. it was the recess. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> We should all As say that. Students. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And, and I think, no, and, and it's true. And I think that it is because uh, it, I, I, it is a perfect time to know your students because you can chat with them really free and you can see them just playing uh, in a free way and you discover how their families are because you know what they have for lunch mm -hmm. what they bring to school so it was a really nice time during the day for me because I could be in contact with them I used to play a lot with them so I used to to prepare some material with balls or things like those to play in the in the playground and I really enjoyed that one. Oh, I yes. love that. It, it I think you're so right as well like in early years I really feel like we get to know our students more than maybe the other years have the opportunity to because they're so filled their timetable with history you know they have to do a certain thing but we really are lucky because we get to know the children and the families that That, that we're supporting and it's just a really unique relationship isn't it yes I, sorry it, uh, English club says that the snacks yes of course I, I really enjoy that one that's too. number two yeah 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 <laughs> the number two is the snacks good point English club I like that I like that <laughs> and something academic was that I really uh, love to sing I really oh. like songs and music and when I started my class, I use uh, something that it's called daily routine. Um, and I always uh, use uh, songs or chants. And I really wanted, and I really liked, sorry, to, to move with the students and make circles and dance and act like if we were uh, animals or things like those. I, this is, it, it was... <clears throat> They were, sorry, some of the moments that I really enjoy. Dancing, singing, touching, because now uh, you cannot touch them. Uh, it is not like it was so many years ago. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, to give that affection? Yeah. Oh, well, I love that. Do you know what? I can see you singing and dancing in the nurseries and having fun, having a good time. It's good. No, now, yes. are you ready to play a game? Yeah. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Okay. So what we <laughs> usually do at the end of the podcast, whenever we have a guest, you've done the hard bit. You've been talking about what it's like in Mexico. You've been doing all the knowledge. Uh, so now uh, I'm going to test you. Okay. And it's okay. would, would you rather teacher edition. And if you're um, in the comments as well, play along. You tell me what you would rather out of these as well. We'll see what happens. Okay. So first thing, Delia, would you rather... Tea or coffee? Tea. Oh, why? 
<laughs> you don't like coffee? What's wrong with coffee? What's wrong with no, coffee? No, yeah. I love tea. Uh, sorry, I love coffee, but I'm addicted to coffee. So now oh. I prefer That's tea. a good point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I cannot oh. stop. If I drink coffee, if I if I drink a cup of coffee in the in the morning, I cannot stop. I can drink five, six. No, really. <laughs> it's like opening a bar of chocolate, isn't it? It's like you can't just have one piece. You just you have to. You know, you have to keep going. I love it. <laughs> with, yes, with all the the pieces. So it happens the same for me with with coffee. If I start oh. drinking coffee in the morning, I have to continue drinking coffee all the day. So I got it. Stop. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, you're very disciplined. You're very good. Yeah. Well done, because I'm the same, <laughs> but I still have coffee. I still do. I just ignore it. I'm like, yeah, but I'm just going to keep yeah. going. No, I'm with you. Oh, before we go on to the next one, English Club says, I love it when parents tell me their child role plays being a teacher at home. Yes, that's also really cute. Do you ever come into school and they go, oh, Delia, they were pretending to be you yesterday and they said this and you're like, I don't say that. Where did they get that from? I promise. I don't say that. And it's just really funny. And you know what? We used to have a student. Well, well I had a student that used to say everything to her mother. It was a oh, girl. No. And, and, the and the mother used to, used to come to the school and say, eh, teacher, I know that the first minutes for you are for making up because Natalia has told me that you are always making up yourself in the morning and you ah! we were just like, oh my god she knows everything about us <laughs> do, do you know children know everything yeah 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 they they're nothing everyone says oh you know it will go over their head no 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 <laughs> if a child three four five hears it they're gonna they're gonna remember yeah yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> okay you ready for your next one okay now you're gonna have to help me with this one because i've never been to mexico so i, I have no opinion would you okay. rather Downtown Mexico City, or is it Zocalo? Ah, well, actually, it's almost the same place. Downtown Zocalo. Is it the same? Yep. Okay, so would you prefer Mexico City or the downtown? I prefer... I love Mexico. <laughs> I love <laughs> all places in Mexico. But here in Mexico City, yes downtown it's my favorite place why my... what's there it's because downtown you can find all the stuff you can imagine you can buy what... yes you can buy a uh, stationary things you can buy perfumes you can find all the things that you want to to buy or sell oh so, so it's really good for shopping it, it's good for shopping. It's it has so many beautiful touristic places, many beautiful, mm -hmm. uh, and you can find a lot of tourists uh, in in the Zocalo near to those places. So I like downtown. This is my favorite place. How far are you from? How far are you from downtown? Uh, I am a little bit near. Mm. <laughs> I don't Maybe. know because when, yes. When I when I um, used to talk with my when I speak with someone from another country and I say no I live uh, really really near it's forty five minutes and they say well forty five minutes is really far uh, <laughs> yes that sounds okay to me that's I mean I'm about half an hour away from Manchester and Liverpool and for me that's like really not far at all but who knows oh, that doesn't sound too bad yeah, to me exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah okay. This last one is my favorite because I think in Mexico you have such beautiful festivals and and you have to pick between you you have to pick one between two of these okay you cannot you cannot have either both of them all right would you rather celebrate Dia de Muertos or Gelgetza Ah no Dia de Muertos Dia de Muertos Oh why that was quick why Ah uh, yes, the Galagetza it's a very beautiful festival. It 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 is in Oaxaca and they have lots of uh, traditions and many dances and so many things. It's a very big uh, festival, especially for tourists, well, for people that uh, live in the specific yeah. area of the country. But talking about feelings, 
talking about culture, talking about, um, and especially now that my mother is not with me, uh, the Day of the Dead is something very special for me. Mm. Uh, so I really love it. I, it has, it is um, a special festivity that has so many uh, meanings in all the things that you do. And it's really colorful and it's not sad because it's not something that it's, well, for me, it's not sad. Uh, I think that it's uh, something really interesting and beautiful that to think that for just one day, you can be in contact with some people or, or animals or some other uh, people that you love and you can be in contact with them for one day, for one night. I honestly I think, think it's, it's a really hard choice because Dia de Muertos is, I think, so unique to Mexico. And it's such a, like you say, it's a celebration of life and of ancestry and your family. And like you say, there's so much joy and there's there's color, there's light, there's just, there's love. And I just, I, oh, that's, that's hard because that's so beautiful, isn't it? But what about um, Gita Getza? For, for our uh, followers who don't know what that festival is about, what, what, what do you celebrate? I know because I'm, I'm not a, an expert in that, in that festivity. <laughs> I, uh, it happens in, in Oaxaca and it, it takes some days uh, and they prepare special dances. They use special clothes from all the, you know, in Mexico, there are about 68, 70 uh, indigenous groups, ethical groups. That's amazing. And do they all come, to, they, do they all come together, don't they? And they wear their, their cultural dress and they do their dances and their indigenous and all of that. And they just celebrate each other, right? Exactly. So can you imagine just uh, just seeing those things in one place, oh. their culture, their clothes, the food, because some, some of the dancers use special uh, equipment requirements, uh, clothes, uh, sorry, um, food, they use fruit or sometimes mm. something specific from the culture. I think it's a really, really interesting and, and it's a big festivity because yeah, you can see yeah. so many things and it's really beautiful because um, there are so many participants in, in that um, kind of festival. Do you know, I feel like a lot, we, we know more about the de Muertos because of uh uh, like maybe uh, Coco, you know, the Disney film Coco and yes. uh, the Book of Life and things like that. And it's more um, no. in the in, in a glo on a global sense. Yeah, I would really, really like to see Gila Gets there on the same level. Like I've never seen that festival. But for me, if I saw it, I think I would pick that because I that just sounds like magic, like dancing and celebration of everyone's culture. And I just, that would be great, but I've never seen it. So maybe I'll go on uh, YouTube and go and look at some dancing and go and have some fun. <laughs> yes, I think that maybe it could be something similar like a carnival in <gasps> some country, Brazil or, yes. Stop, because my <laughs> dream is to go. I want to go yes. to Rio to do the carnival. Like I want to do it. I want to do it. When, when you are really invited here, you can come and stay here. And we can go to Oaxaca. <laughs> we can see so many things here in Mexico. There oh, it's so such a beautiful places. country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When is Kinguetza? When is it? I don't really know. Let me let me Google it. <laughs> That's fine. You Google it. Maybe someone in the comments will know. Cecilia has just yes. said you have to travel to Mexico in October and November. Okay. Well, I'll get planning. I'll get planning. Is that the best time? Is it because of the Dia uh, de Muertos and other things maybe? Um, it's or the good weather. July. Is it July? So I've in still July. got time. In February, March, April, July. May, June. Okay, I've got five months to plan this. Gila gets <laughs> I'm coming for you. Yes. But, and if you really want to enjoy Mexico, you have to come in September. September that it's uh, Independence Day, <gasps> and then we have the Mexican Revolution, and then Day of the Dead, and then Christmas. 
that is yeah. beautiful too. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. actually, you can since July, you can stay here for the Gelaguetza and finish with Dia de Reyes, that it's uh, the Wise Men Day. So I love it. And Candelaria, that it's in February the second. Okay, so, so I'm just gonna move here. here. Yeah, all all year round is a party yeah. in Mexico. I'm just gonna go get on the plane now. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. You come, yes. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh well, then, yeah. This has been such a lovely conversation. Thank you so much for giving up your time uh, to come and talk to me about to, uh, about Mexico and being early years. For our followers and our listeners, if they want to find out more about uh, early years in Mexico and they want to know about what you do, Delia, where can they find you? Um, you can find us. <laughs> well, it, uh, something that uh, I was just reading English Club says that you can go to Tula. Tula is another beautiful place. Really? Can yes. I? Yes, yes, yes. You have to go. Yes. I'm just, and... I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna write all these down. I'm just going everywhere again. Okay? <laughs> yes. And well, of course, that you can visit Twinkle Mexico. Uh, we are preparing so many beautiful material about festivities and academic things, especially for the new changes that are coming for the new curriculum. Mm -hmm. We're really happy that uh, we can help teachers in a different way, especially for the early year ones, because um, we're preparing some guides and some things for those teachers uh, to apply with methodologies like the Reggio Emilia, like mm -hmm. Montessori, uh, that are that are really good for early year students and for teachers because you know ped uh, pedagogical things are not always uh, good updated and we are going to have that material available and um, you can visit if, even if you are not in Mexico <laughs> you can uh, find that material in the Mexican landing page and of course that we are in TikTok in Instagram in Facebook, everything is Twinkle Mexico. Amazing, super. Well, it's been a pleasure, my wonderful friend. Thank you so much for taking time. Followers and commenters, thank you so much for joining us too. It's been lovely having a chat with you. If your friends missed it and you want your friends to, to watch this video from the beginning and join in our conversation, we're gonna save it, we're gonna download it, and then I'm gonna put it on the Twinkle Talks EYFS uh, uh, podcast. So make sure you go check that out. I'll upload that soon. Um, oh, look at this. You got a compliment, Delia. Cecilia says, Teacher Delia is really creative with her English materials. Yes, congratulations, Delia. <laughs> but that's it for tonight, my lovelies. Um, I'm going to let you all go. Have a lovely evening. I'm going to go to bed because it's way past my bedtime. You go yes, and enjoy. <laughs> it's fun. It's what I do for you. You go and enjoy the afternoon sun in your 20, 19, 20 degrees. That's apparently cold. You go enjoy <laughs> it. You have fun. Like, we were at the beach. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, go and hit the cold. beach. <laughs> oh no, 19 over here. We'd be in shorts and t shirts. We'd be out. So <laughs> thank you so much. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye. Adios, mi amiga. Mm-hmm. <laughs>you have it thank you so much delia i absolutely cried with laughter when i got kicked out of that tiktok and delia said uh oh it's the government they're listening <laughs> um i mean it could happen right we've heard stranger things um but it was so lovely to talk to her and she gave such an honest personal view of her time and just listening to her talk about what she loves about early years in Mexico is wonderful. I can't wait to pack my bags and see her in July because that's totally happening now. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got lots more episodes in this series coming up. I'm going to talk with Amy about early years in Northern Ireland because just because we're in the UK does not mean we share the same curriculum, guys. So keep posted. In the meantime, go and check out Twinkle Mexico's social media I've put it in the episode notes and also come and talk to us on social media too I hope you have a great day whatever you're doing and happy Easter bye so that's it from today's episode thanks so much for listening and I hope you really enjoyed it 
If you would like to get involved or would like to know more, come and find us on our social media sites. We have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest and TikTok account. All of the details will be in the description. And whatever you're doing, I hope you have a great day today.